Have you ever wondered if you could decoupage or apply transfers on leather? No? Just me? Well, I've been kind of obsessed with answering these questions, so when I scored a free chair on Facebook Marketplace, I knew I could try it. Since the chair was free, I really didn't have anything to lose. After cleaning, the very first thing I do is do a dry fit, which means I'm not using any product and I'm just taking my paper and holding it up so I can get a sense of where it's going to fit on my project. Then I trim the one edge where it's going to line up flush against the end of my project and then I'm going to tear the other side and the reason that I'm doing that is because I don't want to have a straight seam. Obviously my paper doesn't cover the whole project and I don't want to be able to see that seam. I want to kind of disguise that a little bit. Now it's go time where I actually have to make the commitment. No more dry fitting, I'm actually using product. So I'm starting with DIY paint, clear liquid patina, which will act as my glue and my top coat to decoupage the paper. I do have a little bit of wiggle room. So this paper is a little bit thicker uh, than regular tissue paper. And so I do have a little bit of forgiveness. So I can peel that paper back just a little bit and reposition if I need to. Because I'm doing the decoupage on leather, I felt like my liquid patina was soaking into the leather just a little bit, so I couldn't afford to be stingy. I actually had to use a fair amount of product, and in some cases, peel the paper back and add a little bit more product to get that paper to stick. I also wasn't really worried about wrinkles. I'm actually never really worried about wrinkles because to me the beauty is in the imperfection. So I didn't work that hard to make sure that the paper was super smooth. So if measuring is your thing, you could absolutely measure the paper beforehand so you have a perfect fit to begin with. I didn't because I don't like to measure. So instead, I'm just taking off the extra from the top and the bottom using a small artist brush and a little bit of the liquid patina. So I let everything dry and then I gave it all a second coat of the liquid patina. And after the second coat was dry, I went ahead and gave it a third coat of liquid patina. So after that third coat of liquid patina is dry, it is now time to paint. I'm trying to get the paint to match the background of the paper so that there's a seamless transition. So I chose a couple different colors of DIY paint to do this. I am using the same brush for every color of paint and I am not washing my brush out in between. This kind of helps with the blending. Normally when I blend paint, I'm using a lot of water, but because I'm painting on leather, I chose not to use water at all, so I'm just blending wet paint into wet paint. So did I have to use four different colors of paint for the background? Yeah, probably not, but this is what I like to do. This is one of my favorite things. I like to just play with color and see what happens. You know what else is one of my favorite things? It's getting likes and comments from you guys. So comment down below if you have ever done decoupage on leather. Sometimes the best tools are just your hands and your fingers, so don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Once all the paint was dry, I went ahead and gave it another coat of clear liquid patina, and you'll notice that it changed the color a lot and made that background blend even more so with the paper. And here's a pro tip for you. I knew I wasn't done with my brush and I was gonna have to use it again with the liquid patina, so I just wrapped it in some cling wrap. 
you got dynamite. That smile's gonna be the end of me. I bet you taste like chocolate. Every once in a while, the universe comes through for me, and so I am using this fabric that I picked up for five bucks when I was back in the U.S., and it just so happens it matches that stencil perfectly, and I had already had that stencil. So using my stencil from the stencil studio, my stencil brush, and the golden ticket, I'm just adding in some background. I don't have to be very careful about this. I don't want anything uniform, so I'm just placing the stencil down at different angles and giving myself a little bit of extra something something. So I have a little bit of golden ticket left on my stencil brush and I'm going to use that to just do a little bit of dry brushing like on the nail head trim and some of the corners of the chair. For the flowers, I chose Iron Orchid Design's Floral Anthology Transfer. I ended up using three out of the four sheets in this transfer, so I still have other floral left for another project. I love cutting up the transfers and using parts and pieces and they layer really well. So you can layer one flower on top of another flower and that ends up giving your project a really custom look. So I've never used a transfer on leather before and I wasn't sure how this was gonna work out but I have to say it pretty much worked the same on the leather as it does with any other project. And I really was able to maximize this transfer using all these little bits and pieces because that single transfer, only three out of the four sheets did both the front and the back of this chair. I'm gonna give you an unsolicited design tip. I don't like to adhere my floral transfers in the center of a project because it ends up looking like floating flowers and like you just kinda of stuck it there. So instead, try grounding your transfer on the edge of your project like I'm doing here. So I just kept cutting pieces of the transfer and layering them one on top of the other. And I'm sort of creating like a frame around the chair, keeping the center part open because I have something else in mind for that center part. You'll wanna make sure that you burnish your transfer ensuring good adhesion to your project. Sometimes I use an old sock. This time I used the actual plastic that the transfer came on. Coming down the home stretch, one final coat of the DIY paint liquid patina to seal everything in together. Now I absolutely could have stopped here and just had a very pretty chair, but hold up. I had something else in mind. In a perfect world, I would have taught myself how to do some lettering or some graffiti letters, which is what I really wanted, but it's not a perfect world and I didn't have the patience to do that. So instead, I'm using the typesetting decor stamp from Iron Orchid Designs. So I know that this turmeric colored ink is not really going to show on my very dark background, but that's okay because really I'm only stamping so that I have a guide and I'm going to outline all of this with markers. It almost looks like there's nothing there, but I can assure you that if you look at it close up, you can see the very faint image of where I stamped those letters. So I'm not gonna lie to you, this was really hard for me to do. I was so anxious that I was gonna mess up the entire project because this was like one shot. I had one shot to get this done and I had to get it done right.
This was also the very first time that I was using these Posca paint pens, and I have to say they worked pretty well. They're just like any other paint pen, but they're water-based, which is nice so they're not stinky. After using the gold pen to carefully outline all of the letters, I then used fluorescent pink to fill them in. I did have to go over them two, sometimes three times to make sure that I got everything fully covered. And then I went back with the gold and I re-outlined them just to kind of clean them up a little bit. I know this project is not for everyone and I know some of you are going to say that it's ugly or you don't like it or I should have just left it alone, but I think it's super fun and every once in a while I like to do something that's just a little sassy. As always, thank you so very much for watching. Have any questions, pop them in the comments down below. Happy painting, and I will see you guys next time.